How we doing, guys? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's DraftKings PGA Picks. Uh, we have the Valero Texas Open Showdown Round 2 Edition. Uh, this is a fun first round. Uh, a lot of wind factoring in for the P AM draw, but the PM draw, as we saw towards the end of the day, uh, start firing at pins, and they were getting um, uh, better scoring with the lower winds, and that's something we played for in our showdown here at FSI. Uh, so if you can... If you want to, get into the Discord channel uh, through the uh, Twitter handle at FSI underscore DFS, and you could have got that edge with us this week. Um, yeah, so for showdown round two, I did check over the weather, and it appears the uh, morning draw is going to have the better wind advantage up until about, say, 12 to 1-ish is where we start to see the wind shoot from steady eight to nines to 10 to 12s and then from there it's going to go up in three mile per hour intervals till the end of the day and so the pm draw at the tail end will probably be a really bad uh choice of pick to choose from so keep that in mind when rostering your guys and uh make sure you check the tee times and see whoever is playing in that PM draw towards the end of the day. Uh, give them a fade as they will probably be playing in some heavier weather. Uh, so for now, uh, if you just saw some guys wrapping up on the golf course, they're probably going to be playing in the very early portion of the of the tournament of uh, the round tomorrow, and they're probably going to have a better weather draw. But I'm going to give you guys some of the better stats, some picks in each tier, and uh, hopefully. All our research can come together for some good DraftKings picks. All right, 10K. We have Tony Finau at 10-6. Really good on the approach, but was abysmal off the tee. The driver was not working today for Tony. He did finish ninth in ball striking, but like I said, no off the tee. Guy couldn't putt either, um, so that troubles me with Tony Finau when he's not playing at his full capacity. He's already in 57th. He kind of looks just you know just out of it i could totally see an ejection here at this point and um from that point probably moving on to the masters for tony uh i could see a miscut here so i'll probably have no shares tomorrow but what i do like to see here is speed that 10 2 seventh around the green 12th in the approach 4t to green uh he's t5 uh, i think he's fifth or he will he shot five under he might be yeah t5 because of somehow some how the guys scored at the end of the round, but uh, Spieth looks like he's playing typical Jordan Spieth golf. The approaches are back this year. You love to see that making twenty foot putts. Uh, guy's been scoring under par in multiple rounds in a row right now. Spieth is just being really good and uh, going to be all in on him tomorrow. Corey Connors at ten k, really good off the tee and ball striking, but everything else was really bad. Kind of the opposite of Finau, where Finau was good on the approach. You know you but he was terrible off the tee. It's kind of the opposite with Connors. He was really good off the tee, but he couldn't get hit the approach shot. So those two guys I'm out on, I'm in on speed. 9K. Uh, so I have this full disclaimer on Scotty Scheffler. I am a Scotty Scheffler jinx. Anytime I play Scotty Scheffler, he completely sucks. Anytime that I don't play him, he does awesome. So I'm playing Scotty Scheffler tomorrow. That is your warning to fade him because if – I'm rostering Scotty Scheffler in my lineups. He's going to be shitty. So all this cool current form that he has rolling into uh, this week and into next week, uh, be alarmed because I'm pulling off the tab on Scotty Scheffler. I'm br breaking myself back in. And, uh, yep, that's all I'm going to have to say about that. Palmer uh, being really bad on and around the greens kind of scares me but he is 38th he is in contention to make this cut i think he will do fairly decent tomorrow but i'd rather play shuffler answer fade hideki 9300 looking like hideki robot again uh but he does have a uh he is scoring 10th on the approaches in the field so or 10th on the putting surface excuse me so second off the tee 10th tee to green yeah, the, the, the putting, that's going to regress. So I expect some of his scoring to kind of falter. I think that's going to be good enough to make par around this course because I think he can dominate it off the tee and with his ball striking. But if his putter regresses, he, his birdie chances are going to get 
or his birdies are going to go down. So um, kind of leaning towards a wait and see, maybe a couple lineups, but nothing too heavy. Tringali is the better play. Fifth on the approach, fourth ball striking, first in the field, T to green. Uh, he is T6, or he, yeah, T6. Um, I really like uh, Cameron Tringali tomorrow. Um, probably a core play. Uh, I am skipping the entire 8K range. This is uh, not normal, uh, but there was nothing in that range that I liked. So I think my lineups are going to consist of Spieth to Scheffler to Tringali, and then straight to 7K and value. I don't think I'll have any any 8K golfers. Uh, 7K, I do like Matt Wallace at 7,400, seventh on the approach, 10th off the tee, second ball striking, and sixth tee to green. Striking the ball really well. I was heavy on him in my GPP lineups. He's holding me afloat in classic, and I really need him to continue to do what he's doing. Ryan Moore, also a decent play, third on the approach, second ball striking, 11th tee to green. Really good ball striking numbers from him. John Huh at 7,700. I don't mind him. Sebastian Munoz, first in the field in ball striking, second in the field in approach, second tee to green. Keep rostering Sebastian Munoz this week. Uh, Chase Seifert, another good play, fourth off the tee, ninth around the green, 25th uh, tee to green. So I don't mind Chase Seifert. Tom Hoagie, Joseph Bramlett, and Eric Van Royen round out my 7K love. 6K, you got Brandon Hagee at 6,900, 10th off the tee, 24th on the approach, 5th in ball striking, 16th tee to green. I really like Brandon Hagee. He did not putt well. Uh, I think he could maybe, you know, as, as many looks as he's going to get from good, with good looks, he's going to get better at his putting. So I think Hagee will continue to do well. Uh, Camilo Village, Villa, I can never say this name right. Village, uh, the Colombian, 6,800, uh, playing with a big purpose, losing her his daughter this past year. He's been trying to earn his tour card. Right now he's playing on an exemption. Um, he's a wonderful story, and I would love for him to win this golf tournament. I think it would be amazing for golf, and I would be I will be cheering hard for him on a personal level. Uh, but with my wallet, I'm thinking he's just as good to play, too. First around the green, 26 off the, on the approach. He is doing a lot of this work with a putter. You do wonder how, how much of it he can continue to do. But he is third to the field, two to green. So I think he's going to continue to play well. I'm going to continue to roster him. Patrick Harrington and Scott Harrington, decent plays. I wouldn't call them good, but they're, eh, you know, I, I, they're better than some of the other plays down here. Uh, soon you'll know. Is first in the field in putting. 32nd in approach isn't terrible. Uh, I just, I'm going to have to be a pass for me. Sung Kang blessed us with one of his random, I'm going to miss 15 cuts in a row, and then I'm going to be first in the field on the approach and surprise the heck out of everybody rounds. And uh, that's what he does. Uh, you never know when Sung, you know, Sung Kang is, you bet him first round leader for 52 weeks, and the one time in two years he, he hits, you're going to be plus money. Other than that, I don't play Sun Kang. He's third in putting, 10th in ball striking. But yeah, like I said, first on the approach, uh, came out of nowhere. How much is it sustainable? I don't know. But uh, I don't think he's a terrible play down there in the six K low 6K range. So that'll do it for this second round showdown DraftKings picks for the Valero Open. If you guys have not had a chance, uh, check out the new MLB um, video. Uh, videos that are going to be coming out this week. The McKinley and Mega, they were killing it for the MLB in spring training, and they're rolling it already into um, opening day. So give them a look. Uh, as always, subscribe to this channel. Like and comment below if you want to find us in our Discord channel and find all those cool subscriptions. We have a VIP package that you can get all of it in one. Uh, be awesome and appreciated. You guys are amazing. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you tomorrow for the weekend. See ya.